so this is the final look of the trouser that i made welcome guys and in today's video we're going to learn how to make this trouser so you are going to need about five yards of fabric for fabric for this trouser i used an ankara fabric but if you are using any fabric that is up to um by 60 i think four years will be enough so the client that i made this for is very tall so i folded my fabric in order to get the enough fabric just fold your fabric divide your hip by four and add an extra six inches so that was how i folded it so for now i'll cut the trouser part from the trouser to where the fleece started so i'll subtract Two inches for my band and i'll measure from my waist to my hip from the waist to hip is 10 inches and i'll add just extra one inch for my crotch length that's what i normally do to get a very fitted trouser if you want the crotch to be very very defined just add one inch don't use two so i mark my waist to hip that is 10 10 plus one is 11 so my crotch length is 11 inches so i marked 11 inches and from there i will mark from my waist to the knee from the waist to knee is 21 inches like i said she's a very tall person so i'll mark 21 inches so the length differs it is not the same for everybody then where the flow will start is at 27 inches and i'll go ahead and add extra two inches the two inches is just for extra because i will still trim off before i join so i'll extend this line sorry i'm not using a ruler i was in a haste so i had to draw the lines though they are still straight so i'll draw these lines the waist the hip line the crotch line the knee line the full length and the allowance so i, I don't have um to draw the waistline we all know the waist already so the first measurement that i'll take for this trouser is the hip measurement that's the first measurement to take for any trouser so her hip is 43 inches divided by four that is um her hip is 43 inches divided by four that is 10.75 i guess that is 10.75 plus extra one inch i normally add one inch to my trouser plus one inch that is 11.75 so i'll mark the 11.75 and i will extend that line the place where i measured the hip uh, where i took the hip measurement i'll extend that particular line to my waist and that will serve as the center of this trouser i'll extend the line to the waist and that is the center of this trouser so after taking your hip measurement the second measurement you are going to take is your waist measurement so first of all mark my dart my dart will start at four inches from the midpoint the line that line is the midpoint so from there i mark four inches and her waist is 29 inches 29 inches divided by four should be um this nine inches should be i think 7.25 then i'll add one inch for that because i'll add that and i'll also add one inch for seam allowance and i marked and connected the line to my hip after i marked the waist measurement i connected the line to my hip and as you can see the hip curve is coming out gradually so i'll subtract half an inch on both sides of the that line and that is what i just marked now so our trouser is taking shape gradually the next measurement is the lapse measurement so in order to get the last measurement you first of all call, do your crotch curve the place that i'm doing now is the crotch curve this is the place that will enter in between our ties so i'll place my um how i got the crotch curve is i divided my hip by hip uh, by four and whatever i got i divided it by four again and i got like 2.5 so that was how i got the crotch curve so i'll determine the midpoint of the trouser this is the this line that i'm extending right now is the midpoint of this trouser so i'll extend the line down to where my flail starts in case you you ask how i got my midpoint 
I divided from my crotch cuff to my hip and got the midpoint. So I'll take my lapse measurement. My lapse is 27 inches divided by 4. That is 6.75. And I'll add an extra 1 inch. And that and it will be 7.75. And I'll place that 7.75 on the line. 27 divided by 2 is 13.5. So if you divide the 13.5 by 2 again, you get... 6.75 plus 1 inch that is 7.75 so place that 7.75 on the midline and then mark the line mark the um the measurement so the next measurement is 21 25 21 divided by 2 is um 10.5 sorry 23 divided by 2 that is um 11.5 plus 1 inch that is 12.5 so the midpoint of 12.5 is 6.25 so i placed 6.25 on the line and then marked where the tape started and where 12.5 stopped so if you can see the trouser is taking shape already so whatever you got just place the midpoint on the line just play like um the place where the flay will start is 18 inches so 18 divided by 2 is 9 plus 1 inch that is 10 1 inch is for that is for seam allowance so 10 divided by 2 is 5 so i place 5 on the mid line on the mid line if you can see i place 5 there i'll mark the beginning of the tape and i will mark where 10 is and the shape of the trouser will be coming out gradually so the shape of the trouser is out now i will go ahead and cut this trouser out so i am done cutting this trouser right now the next thing is to fold another fabric and then place the trouser on it so i'm trying to cut the back part so at the mid at the back part you will go in by two inches at the at the center you will go in by two inches and then transfer the two inches to the hip side the reason why i normally come in by two inches at the back is because our back is a bit deep a woman's back the waist side is deep a bit so you subtract two inches and transfer the two inches to the hip side then you will go up by like one inch you can see that the back part is longer than the front part so from that point where you marked one inch you slant it to the hip part the place where you mark two inches at the hip so i'll extend the crotch line by two inches also as you can see it is two inches so i'll extend the crotch line and i'll curve it to meet that point where i went in by two inches at the back so i'll extend the crotch curve at, so this is the crotch curve of the back so the zipper allowance to stop at nine inches so i'll add my zipper allowance that is my zipper allowance that is how i normally add it so if you can see the back part is clearly bigger than the front part I extended the crotch line by two and extended the hip line by two inches. So I marked two two inches. Then around the hip and around the knee line, I will add just one inch. So if you can see, the crotch curve is longer by two inches. The center back is longer by one inch. You can see that the center back is longer. Then the hip side is also wider by 2 inches. So I'll go ahead and cut. So for the crotch part, you can see how I slanted the curve. So I slanted the curve to meet with the knee part. So I'll cut that side. And I'll cut the crotch curve. And when I approach the zipper allowance, this is how I'll cut it. My zipper will be at the back then i will slant the back you see how i slanted it 
because I extended the center back by one. So after that, shift your trouser to meet the side, the front to meet the side of the back and match your that. So that is it for the front and back cutting. The next thing you're going to cut now is the flay of the trousers. So in order to get the length of the flay, subtract the waist to knee from the full length of the trouser. The full length of this trouser is 50 and the waist to the knee is um, 28 inches. So 50 minus 28 is 24 inches. So the length of this flay is going to be 24 inches. So I have folded and the next thing is to divide the circumference like where the flay will start is um 16 inch sorry it is 18 but for this particular measurement i wanted to i want to do something so it is 16 inches divided by 6.28 that is 2.5 so i mark 2.5 round from the center of the of the fabric you can see where i used at the center the place that does not have any opening so from that place where i measure 2.5 i will mark 24 inches round you can see where i did my first curve that is 2.5 from the center then from that place from that place where i mark 2.5 i will mark 24 inches this is a full flay if you are mark if you are doing a half flay the, the calculation will be different so for a full flay just divide the knee circumference by 6.28 and then measure the length so i'll cut out my knee circumference and i'll also cut out the length of the flay so this flay now will be attached uh, will be attached uh, around the knee um, knee part of the trouser you are free to choose where you are flay will start from so this is the flay this is for the one one leg or one part of the trouser i'll go ahead and cut out another one exactly the same way for the second part so after that i'll cut it on my ankara fabric and this is what i have so you know that lining is always longer than ankara fabric so the flay will not reach you can see i joined some parts in order to get the full length of the flay that I desire. Ankara is always shorter than lining. So the length of the line flay for the lining was complete, but it wasn't complete on the Ankara. So I had to join it in order to get the length that I desire. So this is time to mark my handkerchief shape. So my handkerchief shape will start around 18 inches or 19 inches of the flay length. Okay, sorry, I marked it at 20. So from that 20, I'll make a triangular shape. Then I'll measure um, um, 19, 20 inches again and I'll extend the triangular shape. And this is how I will continue until I acquire the number of triangles I want on the flame. From the place where you will attach the knee, you mark 20 inches or 18 or depending on how deep you want the handkerchief shape to be so from there you will draw it down like a triangle you will go up to again and come down so i have cut out the lining and have turned the flay with the lining you can see the triangular shape of the flay you can see how it is looking it is not that just plain round it has a triangular shape down so I'll go ahead and open the lining because I finished ironing. So the next thing that I will do is the upper part. I have turned it to the lining. So I'll go ahead and join. Though it is not part of this tutorial, but this is the top that she will use to wear it. So this is the sleeve. I have turned everything lining. So this is the band. The band is 2.5 inches wide. It is supposed to be 2 inches, but I made it 2.5 inches because i will use half an inch to attach the band to the trouser so i will join the front and the back of the top and add the sleeve so this is the trouser i am done joining and i'll go ahead and iron my zipper allowance so that it will be open i added lining to this trouser 
I did not turn the anchor with the line. I just added it after I will overlock it. So I'll go ahead and iron this trouser very well. And I'll also iron the zipper allowance. Because I'll still open the stitch for the zipper allowance. That is where I'll attach my zipper. So I'll go ahead and give this trouser a nice press. And after ironing it, I'll go ahead and trim. So I have opened my flay. I of course out the lining. So it is time to trim. Remember that I added two inches seam allowance at the beginning of this video. So it is time to trim. I'll subtract my band and then mark 20. It's like I told you guys, the flay will start at 28 inches. So I'll go ahead and trim. I'll I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll abs um, I'll subtract my band and then mark 28 and trim so this is where i will attach the flay of the trouser so this is the flay of the trouser so if you fix it there this is the shape you will get you are free to make your flay a normal flay without the handkerchief shape but i just added it because the person wanted it so if you measure this trouser you realize that the length is what you um have so this is the end of this video as you can see my client is so happy please do not forget to subscribe and hit the like button so that more people can see this video see you guys in my next video bye